Howdy, y'all. Welcome to another Contagious Smile. Unstoppable Justice with my wife and I, Victoria, my beautiful, lovely soulmate. Hi. And I'm Michael. Hi. So my wife wants to talk about the hot topic that's on the news. The Pittsburgh shooting. Okay. So apparently it started with sheriff's deputies going to execute an eviction notice around 11 ish this morning they approached the house and once they tried to get the individual to open the door they were fired upon and then the account was all of the rounds the sheriff's officers were carrying and hundreds of rounds from the person inside the dwelling. This ended up being like a, what was it? Almost a six hour event by the time it was over. And they had multiple jurisdictions, multiple organizations out there. But don't you think that's like a lot of chiefs that are going to be wanting to run and then that kind of make a big cluster where they need to have like, one person in charge of the command center and everything goes by the book. Like they had, we saw on the videos, they even had some officers out there without a vest on. Um, it was an active shooter. I mean, one mile from children's hospital, the place that a whole perimeter of it was locked down, but they brought in multiple organizations. You know, you also have former law enforcement background. The fact that the media disclosed some of the details while it was a live situation, I think is horrific because what if the shooter inside who is now deceased had that information on, had that news station on or whatever was they were listening to. We were listening to Fox. And so let's say he was watching Fox news and he hears that the sheriff's deputies are pinned down and are out of ammunition. And they're waiting on other units and other jurisdictions to respond. I mean, how dumb is that to give that kind of information to an active shooter situation? What do you think? Right. Did, did any of the uh, police officers get hurt? Well, it came out at first, as you heard, that there were officers that had obtained injuries, but none of them were by um, gunfire. It was by shattered glass from. But that's they... my diehard excerpt. But literally, they, I mean, they got they made it sound like it was just this horrific scene and i'm sorry i know that an officer goes through training i know that uh post qualifies so many hours and every year you have to do in-service training you have to qualify again yearly with um your gun how do you miss every single round as an officer from this one person number one and number two how do you handle a situation when there's that many different agencies and organizations on on site. What are your thoughts about it? Okay, so it's easy to Monday morning quarterback. Okay, hindsight is twenty twenty. So we were not at the location. Right. We don't have all the details. I was watching it live. We don't know what's going on through the officer's mind. Okay. Pucker factors obviously at twelve. Oh yeah, they've got okay. their adrenaline. They have tunnel vision. But Let's 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 go back to our training uh, guys, officers, and and y'all can berate me for this, but I was in law enforcement 13 and a half years. Okay, I've been there. I've drawn my gun. Uh, I, I've been there. Okay, so the training involved that these police officers have, they must know what is downrange whenever they fire their weapon. Okay, they discharge it. They know they have to know their backdrop. Explain that to people who might not understand okay. that. So if, if I'm firing, at, firing, firing, I'm a redneck. If I'm firing at a suspect, I can't, obviously I can't see the suspect. He's inside the house. 
shooting from some location, either upstairs, downstairs, through a window, through a peephole, whatever. Uh, I don't have that information. But I can't see that suspect. So why am I firing back if I cannot see them? Okay? I don't know where my round's going. My intentions are good. My intention is to stop the threat. Right, but you don't know if there's hostages inside. I don't know what's behind door number one. Right, but you could be shooting little kids in there because you don't know what's going on. Exactly. He could have a, a child strapped to his chest, and you're you're blatantly firing blindly, uh, like shooting fish in a barrel, and and to run out of ammunition as as you know that's the hot topic they're purporting. Oh, they ran out of ammunition. Well, once again, guys. Go, let's go back to your training. If you can't see the threat to stop it, why are you slinging rounds downrange? And there are other things that they could have done as well, right? You have an open window. I know, let's just take worst case scenario at this point. They've arrived on scene. They, you know, only have a limited amount of, of rounds, which I think should never have been disclosed when they were out of. That's just my opinion. Right. right. They could have done non-lethal things. You know, they see that the glass is shattered. It's open. You don't know if there's civilian inside. You don't know if there's other people inside. You don't know if it's a hostage situation inside. Why can't you, you know, spray them? Why can't you do other things? I mean, yes, well, we but it's better than being the, shot. The uh, That police department's funds. You know, they, they could not be funded for some of the tear gas or pepper spray or some of the other non-lethal devices that... that can be deployed, uh, obviously, by SWAT. Well, that was never disclosed that any of that was even attempted. But I did read that they did use a sledgehammer. That that was the word in the article, a sledgehammer to open, to bust down the front door. And that was probably towards the end nope, when they ended at up. the very beginning, and then they started firing. Okay, so they busted down the front door. And they were welcomed by gunfire. And I mean welcomed in a not pleasant way. That's, that may be when the officers were sustained injuries from glass. Did they ever determine what kind of gun that the no, perp was using? No. So, also another article read that seven, seven deputies went to this location to serve this man an eviction notice. That's outrageous. Right? So. Let's go back. I know Fulton County and Atlanta, Georgia right now is a very hot, hot topic, uh, especially because Trump's going to turn himself in for a $200,000 bond um, for the RICO case. But $200,000 bond, seriously, for Trump, that's a whole different subject. It's like Trump change. Trump change. <laughs> it's Trump change. Uh, Giuliani was booked in today in his suit. But let's go back for a minute. I don't want to deviate too much. Years and years and years ago, Algernon English, Ricky Kitchens, two amazing stand-up human beings, went to serve a warrant with the sheriff's department to H. Rep. Brown, who most people wouldn't know was the head of the Black Panthers. There was no photo either on the warrant, and they approached him and were fired upon. And he ended up, H. Rep. Brown ended up fleeing the scene. Um, Kitchens ended up dying from his injuries. English ended up faking his own death, but you hear them in the 911 tape begging for their lives. Even you hear um, Kitchen saying that he's Muslim, which is the same as H. Rep. Brown, but they had no idea. And it was just the two of them that went. That was my whole purpose of this, is that they were serving a warrant on the head of the Black Panthers. And, 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 and there were two officers serving That it. would be normal. Two, two officers or you know, uh, some some uh, departments have uh, PSA agent or uh, civilian, um, you know, servant uh, go out there and serve eviction or uh, different type of warrants. But to have seven deputies go to serve this man in eviction, they had prior knowledge. They had they had they had some type of intel that hey, this guy has been a troublemaker before. They 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 already know about his uh, arrest records. Uh, he's had history. Uh, he claimed to be a, a sovereign citizen, and, oh. and that's basically a, a, an anti-government uh, extremist. Right. You know, they're they're a law unto themselves. So yeah, they had no. I, I guarantee you they had knowledge that this man had weapons. But they could afford to take seven officers 
off of the rest of county time instead of just two, but they can't afford for the county to have non-lethal forces to use. Right. Well, we'll see what happens now, because I, I guarantee you they're going to rearrange some uh, doctrine. I just, for media, I, I just don't understand why. They will report that. And they do it all the time. It's not like it was just this first time. This was not the first time that this happened by any stretch of the imagination. But they're putting the officers at risk. Exactly. They're putting the officers' lives at risk. And the, the anchors and newscasters should be held accountable. They should not portray that information. They're giving that vital key information to the suspect, you know, at a, at a crucial time. You know, oh, oh, what, what if they said, oh, that's uh, that's Officer, um, you know, Blankenship. You know, he just had a baby uh delivered at Grady Hospital or, right. or whatever. Right. Or, you know, you have other cases like um when Brian Nichols escaped again, <laughs> Fulton County. They have a lot of issues there in Fulton County. Um he escaped a courtroom and he went on the run. Long story short, he ended up taking cover in an apartment complex with a female that was probably a good hour away. And she was reading to him and making him pancakes it's a very interesting story the brian nichols story um but he could watch all this and they were reporting everywhere they were going they were reporting everywhere they were looking um what counties they were going to i mean you're really you know it's hard enough these days more than ever being in law enforcement but to have the reporters give out that kind of information is like putting a target on their back even more so i mean if you and I were still together or you were active now because we were together when you were in law enforcement back in the day and you were on the scene of this and I knew that they were reporting that you had no more ammunition, I would find that to be ground and something happened to you. I would totally find that to be grounds to take right. you know, a lawsuit and, and to factor into this because you're putting my significant other the father of my children's life in jeopardy because you're running your mouth i mean you know we chose not to even record this until the situation had been resolved but look how many agencies went for one shooter one shooter and then you have these school fights and you have these school shootings and you don't have anything near this kind of turnout which is why i don't understand how come you have multiple agencies? You even had the FBI there. But then when there's school shootings, you don't have this kind of law enforcement turnout. Right. I mean, I understand the whole FBI arriving on scene to a degree because they can profile a lot faster than an agency. Like an FBI could see his passport and where he's been lately. And but they already knew who he was. Right. They had everything. If they're going to evict him, they they they, have they everything. don't have everything because it doesn't give them like aliases that didn't say like on the H. Rat Brown it didn't say he was head of the back Black Panthers it didn't give his alias it just said his legal name and it didn't have a photograph so the officers who were too young to know who he was walked in to live fire basically you know he approached them and shot them and it was horrific but. That's what I'm saying is is that I can understand to an extent having the feds in there, but then you have all these other shootings. They don't get this kind of turnout. Who get who makes the call that this is more important than that? I, I don't know. Speaking of uh, you know, walking into something, you know, when when you have you walk into the unknown, you need to be prepared. Okay, if that takes a thousand rounds of ammo in your police unit, then by God carry it, okay. If you're that horrible of a shot and you need a thousand rounds, okay, go back to your training, go back to the gun range. All right? But you have to Spend qualify months and months at the gun range to obtain your state certification, making that 100 every single time. <clears throat> but doesn't that hold you on more liability if you shot and killed a perp playing devil's advocate? You're going to you're going to get it either way. How many officers are going to be written up for for slinging lead down range? And, you know, but the requirement is yearly that an officer has to requalify with their service weapon and they have to aim at at least they have to get at least what at 80 percent. Right. And if these officers aren't even hitting the, anything, 
you know, save your rounds. Like, what are you doing? What if he approached you right to your face and you have no right. ammunition left? Then what? You know, you can't go pick it up and throw it at him, which is a great point you made earlier. I mean, that's not going to do any good. So, and 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 if y'all are listening and you're you currently are law enforcement um, or you know other departments, but please forgive me. I am I am for you. Trust me. We I, are very much in support. I carry of law enforcement. I carried my sidearm. I carried a backup inside of my vest. I carried a shotgun and I carried a long rifle. And I had enough ammo and magazines for that. I carried five knives on my person and I carried a handcuff key hidden inside the watch band of my watch. Because we've had officers uh, where I was located at. I remember. Get uh, get handcuffed by the suspect, thrown into their unit. Watch it. Yeah. We won't go there. Anyway. But I mean, seriously, like it, it's the qualifying of it is so important to make sure that they know how and we are a contagious smile is so actively in you know support of law enforcement and in every way possible my heart goes out to officers now there's no way shape form or fashion that i would be okay with anyone that i you know in my immediate family here being in any type of capacity in law enforcement it's just too dangerous it, and it was dangerous back then but it's so much more dangerous now. I mean, it really is. And the thing is, is another reason, and he doesn't ever want me to brag about him, but he actually um, obtained highest shooter award when he went through. I mean, he was a good shot, not as good as me, but he was a good shot. And he really could shoot anything he was. But I spent months at the range. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, I get that. I know that. But I'm just saying you could, could shoot anything but you were aiming for it is different when when you're in the moment right moment you have tunnel vision and your adrenaline think about a lot of things Mm -hmm. okay one uh where's my where's my round going right if i can't see my target i'm I'm probably not going to shoot i'm not going to pull that trigger because i don't know what i will destroy beyond what i cannot see and that that's i could not live with myself had had forensics come up and said, "Hey, this this bullet hit this kid matches your firearm, and now this four year old kid is dead." You know, I, I just I, there's no way. So, what do you think the media needs to be doing different? I understand the need to support, and I know understand the need to report about what's going on. I get all that, but. You're putting officers' lives in danger. I mean, think about it. You're as an as a reporter, you have to go by certain standards and stand back a certain amount of feet and and comply with you know the commander request and orders. You have to do all that. But why would you put their lives in jeopardy? They all can't think they're not doing it because this has been a question that we've heard a million times. What 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 is what is the thing you say? If it bleeds, it leads. That's true. It seems it seems to me that you know journalists, reporters, they need to be held accountable to a certain degree. I understand you know you can't censorship what they say. You know it's freedom of speech, um, but they need to have some type of some type of training. Right. right. I mean, they could say there's been dozens of rounds, you know, transferred between everybody there or whatever they want to say that way, but to say hey by the way they're out of all their ammo i mean they didn't know that information they were given that information somebody had to tell them that because we heard on our own how they said oh it was like tens of units i mean tens of rounds but we heard it it was way more than right. 10 rounds oh stop saying hello he always says hello when we're doing this he says hi but i mean i just i hate that what else could the officer do to protect himself during the situation? They they need to lobby for different types of uh, non lethal force. Um, Can they buy it for themselves have, and carry it without being government issued? If the department authorizes it, you know. Well, like I know that in order for anybody to carry a taser, we had to be tased. Okay. In order for anybody to carry the pepper spray, right we had to be sprayed. At the door, at the window, they could have threw in, you know, a canister of OC. Exactly. You know? and, then, and that 
that shit, y'all, is, is horrible. It's fatal. Like, not fatal is in the sense yeah. of fatal, but it is awful. OC pepper spray, depending on the Schofield uh, heat unit, is just, is horrible. It stays with you. It stays in your clothes, your hair. It gets in your skin. It's it's basically crushed cayenne pepper in an aerosol form, and it, it it's it's horrible. It's raunchy. So I, I mean, they they could have lobbed one of those in there, or two or three of them. You know, I'd rather treat a child and and wash that out and decontaminate them than right. have to bury them. I mean, that's but again, we weren't there. We could make decisions, right? You know. So yeah, I could see some policies changing uh, for that. Uh, was it PD or SO there? SO is the one that originally arrived okay. to do the uh, execution. But this is the same thing. It's been happening for decades when they report the whereabouts or they report, you know, this is what the shooter has, da, da, da. this is what law enforcement's doing. You know, law enforcement's approaching the South side. I mean, you're basically if the you're, you're telegraphing, right? So if the shooter, shooters, whoever, singular, or plural, are watching this, and the re reporters are saying, you know, well, the officers don't have the building surrounded; they're approaching from the south side, or they're doing whatever. You're making them walking targets. I mean, that's scary. That's really scary. Again, you know, the, the reporters should should have some kind of accountability. You know, from from the department or from the the um, the news station. The news station, correct. Well, they're told to report it. I mean, that's the thing, and they I I've heard this a million times. When it's always the same thing. This they give very specific details, you know, and they shouldn't. Like, I don't believe if God forbid an officer is hurt or shot. So many times you hear. Officer Joey Bag of Donuts was shot in pursuit of this. It's still ongoing. You need to respect the family and let the family get notified first. Mm -hmm. Let the officer get medical care. Even if he's passed on, let the family, for all freaking good grief, let them know first. Pay a little respect. Let the family know. Give them that, you know, this officer gave his life in the line of duty. Give them the respect enough. I mean, news is on morning, noon, and night. Give them the respect of waiting long enough for the family to hear it, not on the news. I mean, to hear that on the news, it's, I would think is a hundred times worse than, you know, no matter what, it's going to be horrible to hear. The news is going to be awful to get. But out of respect for the officer who, again, dedicated his life to his county, his city, his state, depending on what organization he's with, he deserves that, what do you want to call it? The, the time of privacy for his family to be notified. Right. Because it's, it's, no matter how you hear it, it's going to be horrible. But then to hear it on the news, I, I think is, is just not respectful for the officer. And I don't think they do enough for the officer or the officer's family when you have someone injured or deceased in the line of duty. I'm very pro officer. I'm very pro law enforcement, but I mean, I just don't think enough is being done. All right. And you got to remember these, these officers out there, you know, working for 21, $25 an hour. Right. And what, are, and there was no one else, no civilian out there trading uh, bullets for bullets right it, it was it was these police officers right you know for would you do that for 20 25 dollars an hour yeah so thank them folks we need them especially now these times that we're in right now are just getting so awful i mean awful never in our history have we ever indicted a president that's actually going to be incarcerated that's crazy ever and then where do they take them is the fulton county jail who is also under federal um scrutiny for being one of the worst jails like anywhere everywhere if you look it up it's in atlanta um i believe and they get such scrutiny because it's a horrific jail i mean i everywhere you go you hear the jails are are awful i mean it's not you know club med i get it but you know they went weeks and weeks without water or any kind of plumbing 
Yeah. And that was how it went in their cells, you know, and they didn't flush and they have to share a cell. And yeah, the, so you basically have to take a bucket of water and pour it down the toilet to, to you know, pressure flow it. Yeah, it's. <laughs> you ought to see the look of my wife's face. Think about the women's dorm. Men are oh, worse. No, women are way worse. Whatever. What do they do with the pedophiles? I know they don't put them in gen pop. So. What do they do with the pedophiles are uh, in ISO isolation? I know what ISO is, but I'm just saying, like, what kind of privileges do they get? One hour out in the in the field for, or not in the yeah. field, but the court. When you're in isolation, whatever. That's it. You may go to medical, but that's it. Your food's brought to you. Well, I know the food's brought to them, but they don't even let them out an hour a day to go out for fresh air or play basketball or whatever. And people think that their rights are being taken away. Yeah. I don't know what's going on in this country. It's it's not the country that we grew up in, that's for sure. And it's so scary. You know, you think about how scary it is now and you can't do... What are you looking at? We had more puppies, by the way. And so we are like puppy land here. And... So many people know this, but I, I say it often. Our entire property, because my husband has a little OCD, the entire property, side, front, back, middle, whatever, is on camera and recorded. And he keeps the recordings and he's always looking up. And I do the same thing. Like we have all these monitors in the office and it's recording and he's always looking. I end up always like staring at the cute little puppies that are just so cute. I'm just watching the spider build a web on one of our cameras. Uh, speaking of puppies, y'all. We're doing something really cool. Let's change it. We are, we've done this once before. We're going to do it again. Now, everybody knows that Stucco, my service dog, is our mascot. Stucco has been a little frisky lately, to say the least, and has fathered more puppies than he knows what to do with. Like, I can't count how many puppies this guy's fathered by now. And he's not even, he's just like, a, he's just a year old. So we know how hard it is in these times financially. I mean, even at the grocery store the other day, mac and cheese was like almost $12. That's insane. So we want to do something because we have funded this entire program and company out of our own pockets from inception. And we want to... Give away three puppies. But in order to do it, you need to either e email us at puppy tails at a contagious smile dot com. Might want to spell it. I T. Puppy tails. P U. You P U. Did you fart? May I finish, please? <laughs> P U P P Y T A. L E S at a contagious smile dot com. At a contagious and what do they need to send us in the email? You need to send us a nomination of a family or a child who wants or deserves or whom you think deserves uh, a puppy in their life. And we want to read these stories. Yeah. We want to go through them and We'll pick a winner like we did last time. It, it's extremely difficult to go through these stories, but uh, we'll pick one and we'll get the puppy out to them. Yes. So you can and, nominate yourself, your family, yep. your kids. Um, you can go on our website and see some of the puppies that we we had in the past and we'll update some more. They got to add new pictures. We're on a lot of other different platforms, y'all. Uh, be sure to check them out. Um you know, go over to the Facebook page, go over to Instagram, TikTok, support us. We're doing lives. We're starting to yes. do lives and give us likes and things like that, because it is extremely hard to, to do this financially when we're trying to make sure that everybody gets taken care of. And it's not cheap doing this. And we make sure the dogs get great care, great food, great nutrition. They get vet checkups. They get their um, immunizations, play time. their playtime. They get bath time. They get pool time. It, it's, they're so, you know what? They're not spoiled. They're 
perfectly pampered. Yeah, thank y'all for the likes, um, and please watch out whenever we go live. Um, I don't. We'll we'll, we'll kind of start broadcasting it out on certain days. Yeah, we're just getting into it, so bear with us. But uh, please, if you see us live, jump on real quick. And let me let me do a shout out. Give me this microphone. Let me do a shout out. If y'all know me personally, if I've been out to your house <laughs> and keep it clean, service your equipment this really is not going well for you <laughs> okay you dirty minded folks like uh, your daughter how, how should i put this if, if i've came out to that house and talked to you personally please respond to me uh in, in the card i get it gave you uh send me an email a text uh or just pick up the phone and call me well we'd love to have you on now I also want to thank you. I also want to mention that if you look like we put Faith's book trailer that we just did on TikTok and go that, Faith. That's my daughter. Oh, really? And she got over a million, a million views on her TikTok um, trailer within 36 hours, I think, something like that. Well, here's the thing. We are getting that much turnaround, but people ask me all the time, y'all have incredible numbers. Why aren't there a lot of comments? Well, here is the reason. I tell people all the time, don't comment. If you are in a situation of abuse or just left a situation of abuse, or you have removed yourself and gotten yourself on the road to healing and recovery, you never want to put anything out there that can be found. And leaving even comments can be traceable. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you keep as safe as possible. I get a lot of emails. How many emails would you say? 10,000. I, I get it's it's close to that. Um and we just, you know, I get lots of comments and and emails and I love them. I read every one of them. But we want to make sure that we keep everybody safe, which is our number one priority. But if you see us on there, like us, share us, because that's how we can continue to fund this. And we do get donations to our GoFundMe, which we appreciate every single one. So if you can't do that, then please, by any means, even if it's a cup of coffee, you have no idea how far that goes because they get great homemade treats. They get toys. They get all sorts of playthings. They have air conditioned kennels when it's 98 degrees or whatever to keep them cool. They have heaters in the winter. Um, we definitely love our babies. They're not just puppies, they're our babies. So big difference. Oh, are we trying the, um, the sponsorship? If you would like to sponsor us, uh, also send us an email and let us know and we can uh, have a meeting with you about that as well. Yeah, like for a dollar, three dollars, five dollars, something like that. And you'll sponsor one of our beautiful doggies and we'll send you pictures and we'll send you newsletters and you will be helping families. Because let me tell you, and I know I sound like a broker record when I say this, you never know when it can happen to you. And God forbid it does. And we hope and pray that it doesn't. But I can't believe that we are two and a half weeks shy of my one year amputation anniversary. I can't believe it already. And we did not know at that point in time that that was going to happen. And it changes your life tremendously. It, it really does. I, I used to wake up and, and sit on the edge of my bed and complain about, oh, my back hurts. My knees hurt. They pop and I'm old. You know, then, then I turn around and I look at my wife and I see her nub. And, you know, she's got one arm and I'm thinking, what the hell do I have to complain about? Nothing, nothing. Well, I've never played that card. Like, oh, I have one arm, so you have to do whatever. He gets on my case about it because I'll move furniture. I'll do this, I'll do that. And he's like, what are you doing? And I'm not the person that can sit and let others do it for me. I work seven days a week, 20 hours a day. And, you know, if you reach out to me, you'll get me. Um, it might not be right away. If I'm working with a family, then that's priority number one. 
um, that I do. And the thing is, is that like that I'm hearing impaired or that, you know, there's certain things I can't do because like I have all this metal in my face, none of which was elected, you know, and it makes a huge difference. But are you going to give the rest of your life to moping around and being sad and feeling bad for yourself? Or are you going to turn your tragedy into your testimony, you know, and literally show that those are scars are my, my battles, uh, what do you want to call it? Badges of honor. It is It is what I show of how many times that piece of shit tried and failed. That's right. And believe me, don't think, oh, well, sh- look how she's thinking that way. This didn't happen overnight. I didn't go from the beaten, battered wife to, you know, these are my badges of honor. These are my badges of warrior. It didn't happen overnight. And there's still things that I'm trying to to deal with and cope with about it. But I look at it this way. If you take a cup or a jar and you look at it metaphorically as it's your heart, you only have one. Do you want to fill it up with happiness or do you want to fill it up with misery? Because this life is already too short. You need to fill it with all the love in the world because if you fill it with misery, you're letting that son of a bitch who was your attacker, your abuser, your predator, you're letting them win. And you know what? Not anymore. And what's great is that every, I think it's every seven years, by then you've removed the cells of your skin and you have all new. So after seven years, not a part of you he has ever touched. And that is like totally a refreshing, or she. Or she. Like it's it's a really amazing metaphoric uh, exfoliation, if you will. But you can't, I'm not going to let them win. I'm not going to let him win. You know, he's a coward. He's a piece of crap. And it took me a very long, long, long time to get there. Why are you looking at me like that? Because if, if our listeners want to know more about that and about you, about how much strength you have now, how you got there, they can read the book, your memoirs. Memoirs? Memoirs. Who Kicked First. Who Kicked First. You can find it on Amazon. That You can do it. It's going to go on our website. I'm only one person doing all of that so it'll get on there too but you and can get our daughter oh i figured you were going to say that oh, since no. you just spat out that she's our daughter kid. produced a, a number one bestseller about you about me called i am kitten Daddy Dad's Pr- girl, daddy's girl and dang proud of it mm-hmm. yep yeah, little awesome. pranksters that you two are so she's she's uh she's been doing some teen talk podcast and inspiring others to write Mm -hmm. be more creative and they're actually wanting to do another news story about how far and everything she's come and we can give more details on that later um because she's just a miracle everything she's overcome and accomplished you know and everybody she's ever her life has ever touched has been better for her being in it y'all go to our website check out what everything my wife has to offer as far as Legal services, documentations, uh, we have classes. Uh, we would love to have more people um, interact with with a contagious smile and, you know, get on this journey with us and help us. It's just the two of us, and I'm constrained with time right now, trying to get in here and do podcasts and live feeds and whatnot. And my taking wife, care of the puppies. Yes. And Very your awesome. wife is Sorry, what? One puppy is here. And your wife what? And my wife's up here 21 hours a day, one handed on the computer. Well, and also I have created a networking forum on Facebook and it's called a Contagious Smile Network Group. It is open to the public, but what a way to help lift each other up is to help one another. So we can go on there and tell us about yourself, your company, the services and things you offer and provide, and we can help one another there too. And that's free. There you go. Maybe also if you have some jobs that you're looking to fill, and we have plenty of women that have had to vacate their situation due to abuse and they're looking for a new job, you can give us your job postings and we can try and help with that as well. Because a lot of times I have people say, I need another job. I need to be able to to pay for this, that, and the other and to help support my kids. And they don't know where to go and look. So if you have jobs that you need filled, you can also let us know. Right. So would you like to take us out? No, I'll let you do it. You're so good at it.
Oh, by the way, y'all, my wife and I, we, we are just on the same page. Oh, no, you're not going to tell them about this. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. It's fine. Fine. Go ahead. So a few months back, she got me a watch, a leather watch. And the faceplate was a picture of my wife and myself. And I just thought that was the bee's knees. It's just awesome. So I wore it for months. I'd, I'd say a few months. And the glass on the face popped out one day. And I was really disappointed. And, you know, I, I took it off. Well, what little did I know is that the same, the next day, the next wife, day. my wife ordered another one. From a different company. And today I get home and she goes into her purse and pulls out this package. And before I even see the box, <laughs> I, I looked at my wife and I said, is that my new watch? Man, she cussed me up and down, left and right. And I, just because we're, we're, we are always doing this. Always. And, and that's, that's how you know you got your soulmate. And folks, I tell you, she was in a horrible relationship. I was in uh, uh, an abusive relationship. We got out of it. You can get out of it, and you can find the love of your life. I know that's kind of mushy for me, and I won't say any more. No, go ahead. No, no. No, go ahead. But uh, You did propose to me on a podcast. Oh, yes. You're that's running out of time. I have to marry you again. We get married every year so that we stay newlyweds. And new rings. You better get crack a lacking. All right. Thank y'all for listening. A contagious smile. And please go on the website. And if you see us uh, live, please uh, show us some love and send us some likes. And give us your story on puppy tales at a contagious smile.com. That's right. We want to read y'all stories. We want to give away these three puppies. They need homes, y'all. Y'all. Thank you and good night.